Good afternoon, brothers and sisters and friends from around the Caribbean. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Tonight is a very special night. We are hosting a devotion with a twist. We have invited members of the International Church of Christ in the Caribbean to be able to join us in our devotion. And we hope that the sharing of news will really uplift your spirits and be able to give you a perspective that will be helpful and encouraging at this time. The church that is hosting tonight is the Kingston Church of Christ, but we have many different churches from around the Caribbean who you will be able to hear from tonight. And we are part of an international church family called the International Church of Christ. And regionally, as a Caribbean region, we have 3,000 members in 14 different countries. And the countries are Jamaica, Bahamas, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, the British Virgin Islands, St. Kitts and Nevis, Barbados, St. Vincent, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana, and Suriname. It is really great to be able to be a family uh, together in the region. Uh, you know, in the past, we've had conferences in different countries and we have delighted in seeing each other, getting to know each other. And as a result, we really are one close knit family. This COVID-19 is a little bit strange for us because we don't get to fellowship locally, but even regionally. We had uh, hoped to be able to see each other soon, but we're not sure when that will be. But uh, this really is an opportunity for us to be able to um, you know, hear from each other nonetheless. Before we hear news from around the Caribbean, I'd like to just lay a spiritual foundation for what we're about to do. Please turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. It reads, Now when I went to Troas to preach the gospel of Christ and found that the Lord had opened a door for me, I still had no peace of mind because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I said goodbye to them and went on to Macedonia. On Paul's journey, there were many places, many cities, many towns that were not very welcoming. In fact, some were downright violent towards him. But Paul the Apostle had found a city where the Lord had opened the door for him. And yet, he decided to leave there. Why is that? He had no peace of mind because he did not find his friend, his brother, Titus there. So he left Rose and he went on to Macedonia. And we know that friendships are very important in a church family. Uh, we see that in Jesus, wherever Jesus went, he had people with him, he had friends with him, he had the apostles with him, he had disciples with him, he went into people's homes, he had dinner with them. them. So we realize as Jesus walked, we realize that we need to follow this in the same footsteps. And so therefore we are, you know, we rely heavily on friendships and relationships. Yes, and we can understand why Paul wanted to see Titus. He really did rely heavily upon Titus and his friends, not only for personal encouragement, but also to help him to fulfill his ministerial duties. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5 to 7, it reads, For when we came into Macedonia, we had no rest, but we were harassed at every turn, conflicts on the outside, fears within, but God who comforts the downcast comforted us by the coming of Titus, not only by his coming, but also by the comfort you had given him. He told us about your longing for me, your deep sorrow, your ardent concern for me, so that my joy was greater than ever. In Macedonia, Paul had a very difficult time. Macedonia is a region uh, that has Philippi, and you know what happened in Philippi. Paul was arrested, he was beaten, mm. he was jailed, he was put in stocks in jail. Mm. Even though we saw that the jailer and his family became Christians, we know that it was physically a hard time for Paul. And he describes it here to the Corinthian church. But he says that, you know what? He was comforted by the coming of Titus and by the news that he brought about the Corinthian church. I know that whatever we're going through in life, even if there's a hardship in our life, 
that we can find comfort in hearing from each other and hearing good news about what is happening in the, each other's lives. So, you know, the, you know, it's so important for us to be able to see that these times are very important. We need to be able to share news with each other. We need to talk about how each other is fearing and we need to be able to uh, find a way to be able to meet face to face, even if it's virtual, but to be able to have good times together. Yeah, relationships are very important in the church because the church is not a building. The church is the people and the people is important for the people to have fellowship, to have connection and not just to connect with each other, but also to connect with Jesus and with God. And so therefore we invest in them, we, we cherish them, we nurture them. And that's what tonight's Devo is about. Yes. So with that, I invite you to join with us to pray to God at this time. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your incredible love for us, your mercy and your grace that you've poured out on us each and every single day. The fact that we are disciples, followers of Jesus, washed in the blood of Christ, are redeemed for the day of salvation. Father, we, we know, Lord, that you have uh, protected us, you have sealed us, uh, you have uh, put your stamp on us so that we are protected. And I pray, Lord, that you'll be able to with us tonight as we enter into this Devo. I pray that you will really encourage our hearts with the news that will be shared tonight. I pray for your blessing upon each country, that you will be with the disciples and you'll help them to be safe. But guide our governments, Lord. I pray that they'll be wise, that they'll be compassionate, that they'll be understanding, and that you'll help them to make right decisions, find the right balance of policies, that you can help us be able to fight this virus and also be able to uh, uh, keep our income stream going so that people will be able to find food and to be able to uh, take care of their families. I do pray that generosity will be alive and well and that in our hearts, Lord, that you will prompt us to be able to meet the needs of each other and our friends and the general public uh, once we can help us to find ways to be able to meet needs. Let us be like Jesus in this world. Inspire us, teach us and guide us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to start off with some news from Jamaica. All right. So let me first tell you about COVID-19 in Jamaica. There are currently 350 cases. And unfortunately, we've had seven deaths, including a four-year-old. Mm -hmm. Very heartbreaking to hear that. But uh, that is where we are at right now. Our government has been healed on the international scene for its early response to the COVID-19 spread. And by doing certain, making certain decisions, they were able to uh, keep it in check, to be able to keep it for a few weeks in check. And we had a really low count in the first few weeks. But unfortunately, uh, at one of our budding industries in Jamaica, the call centers, uh, many cases were discovered. Uh, what happens in the call centers is that people work in an enclosed setting. Uh, they work pretty close together and sometimes they share even equipment. And at a call center, what are you utilizing? You're speaking, you're talking. Mm -hmm. And when you talk, um, the spread of the virus or, you know, those particles, those droplets can spread quite readily. Yes. So from one case, it led to 178 cases currently. And, uh, you know, that is a significant amount. If you think of the number of cases in Jamaica, 350 and 178, they are linked to this one call center. You know that there was a significant infection that was taking place for a while undetected at that call center. But we've had some bright spots. Some members in our church have been very generous and very kind. Uh, you know, within their means, they've donated, they've donated food items, they've donated uh, kinds to, to different persons who are in need to help them to put food on the table, to feed themselves, but also to feed their families. Yes, we're grateful for those disciples and also for healthcare workers in general. You know, the healthcare workers around the world have been lauded for their selfless, uh, you know, service. They are putting themselves at risk. And even here in Jamaica, we see the same thing. There's one such person I'd like to highlight, and that is Dr. Joseph Kelly. He is a brother in the church. He grew up in the church, was baptized at an early age, a young age, 
graduated and is you know serving his community he is one of the doctors who are at that call center mm -hmm. testing people to see if they have the sickness the virus and uh, you know he has been a great servant he's showed it so many times joseph also is involved in his purpose in a mission joseph recently helped my cousin to become a christian we studied the bible with my cousin martin chang and Martin got baptized on March 14. I'm so delighted by that. He is the fifth family member to become a Christian. And uh, you know, so I'm really excited. And uh, he's a person who studies the word of God deeply. And there's so much I can say about Martin, that for another time. Uh, but just like to know that Joseph is playing a key role in his life as his discipling partner. We've also had other conversions. We have a, a teen young lady become a Christian in Montego Bay and she studied the Bible with uh, Cherie Spencer and also her daughter, Jasmine, which is very encouraging. And also Patrick Simmons became or was restored in one of our Southern churches in Maypen. And it's really very encouraging because these conversions were done online <laughs> using the online platforms like WhatsApp, and zoom so we're very encouraged and you know as a result of the times we've been doing many different things online we've been doing teen devotions online we've been doing campus divas online we've been doing our worship services online and also there is a, also another a son of a disciple who is also studying and he he lives very far he lives in another parish the parish of portland so i realize that god has provided exactly what we needed at just the right time Yes, we certainly wish the persons who are sick to get well and we're praying for that. And we are, you know, hoping that we can see the governments be able to combat this thing successfully. We need to be praying for governments. As the scripture said, we need to be praying for kings. We need to be praying. And so continue in your prayers. But without any further ado, I'm going to hand you over now to news from other parts of the Caribbean. Hi, my brother and sister from Caribbean. Uh, my name is Jesus Cruz. I lead the church from Puerto Rico. Today, my son with me is going to share in the news about the church. Uh, he discipled two years ago. Um, he's better, better speak English. He's going to today sharing. Hi, my name is Jesus Cruz, and I want to share about the church in Puerto Rico. First of all, we thank God that within the church, no member to this day has been infected with COVID-19. Although we have been all over the country under curfew since March 15, the Holy Spirit has continued to help non-disciples to get to know God and all of His, his love. Throughout the quarantine, thanks to all of the brothers that have taken their time to spread the word of our God. We have had our Facebook live services and my mom started two weeks ago a project named Life Teachings on Facebook Live and YouTube. In Facebook, it is the page of our church. You can find it there. And on YouTube, the channel is called Enseñanza de Vida. And it is for women and it's every day at 10 a.m. Finally, the Spirit of God has not stopped spreading the message of Jesus Christ our Lord. And with all of this said, take care. Be hot. Hi, greetings from the beautiful island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. My name is Arrington Rage, and this is my lovely wife, Mary Rage. Hello, brothers and sisters. We are currently leading the Kingston International Church of Christ as our lead ministers, Almando and Janelle Kwao, Take a short sabbatical. Enjoy your sabbatical quals. As it relates to the novel coronavirus, COVID-19, Mary will now give us our latest report. As of Sunday, April 19, 2020, 6 p.m., number of coronavirus cases, 12, the number of persons recovered, 1, number of COVID-19 related deaths, 0, Number of persons tested, 94. Number of pending results, 1. Number of persons in quarantine, 24. 
The one pending result is a medical clearance test. Our government has issued advice from our local Ministry of Health in us as a population, practicing physical distancing, constant hand washing. Some of our main ports have been closed, along with schools closing a week earlier during the Easter break. And schools have been placed on two more weeks of break. Persons, as you heard from our report, have fallen ill, been quarantined, tested, and given a clean bill of health. We must thank God that none of our disciples have fallen ill, nor our families. But we as a church continue to pray for God to heal those who have fallen ill to this dreaded virus. As a church, like many, we have heeded the advice once more of our healthcare professionals and have ceased meeting at the physical church building. And now we are having church online through Zoom. We have joined at least once with the church in Trinidad that actually planted a church here in SVG. And also locally, we are having local church services and ministry times via Zoom. From us here, our prayer is that God takes us all through this tough time together and help us to learn the lessons that he wishes for us to learn and protect us from this from falling ill to this deadly virus and i pray that mankind would come to the recognition that jesus is lord from us here in svg stay safe brothers and sisters we love you greetings from the beautiful british virgin islands my name is sylvester and this is martha we are here in Tortola, the British Virgin Islands, and like all over the world, we have been impacted by the COVID-19. Um, we, we're really excited about just the things that God has been doing in spite of COVID-19, but just wanted Marvel to share a little bit about what's been happening and the impact that COVID-19 has on us here in the British Virgin Islands. Well, as some of you know, the BPI is actually a very small community of about 30,000 people across a number of islands. And since about March, middle of March, we've had five cases of COVID-19. Um, unfortunately, one person has passed away and we currently have one active case of COVID-19. And so for us, it means that our community has been on lockdown. Um, we're actually on a fourth week of 24 hour lockdown, which means that we're not allowed to leave our homes um, or even our yards. And, you know, really just only essential workers who are out and about meeting the needs of the community and keeping us safe and protected. Um, with that comes a number of challenges in terms of communicating with our loved ones and, you know, really um, being outside, but you know, we're still grateful for all that God is doing. And God continues to be very productive and helping us in so many different ways. We've been able to stay in touch with the church in St. Thomas, which we forged a, a great relationship with over the years, and uh, they've been really encouraging to us, so we continue to build with that. And God continues to work in such incredible ways that we, we may not even not have understood. We had a couple that we've had a great relationship with who have reached out to us and since we've been for 14 days on the lockdown having daily devotionals with them and enjoying our times together uh, we've been engaged in a bible study with one young man who um, has a tremendous heart and wants to seek god with, and love god so god continues to work in such incredible ways um, we, we can look at this situation and think well how can god possibly work but here it is he's shown us constantly not only is he with us he's shown us that he will lead us and he'll take care of us in every way so we just want to encourage you as a church to continue to stay faithful to god continue to love each other and whatever you can do if you can zoom stay zoomed in and connected to everyone we love you have a great time bye bye Greetings from the church at Braystone Barbados to our brothers and sisters of the Caribbean and beyond. Barbados is currently at almost a week without new cases of COVID-19. Amen to that. Our statistics read 75 confirmed cases, 5 deaths, 
25 recovered, 45 active cases before them being critical. So those we have to be praying for as we have to do through the whole Caribbean and the world as, as, as a matter of a fact. There are allocated shopping days by last name letter. Um, the so Marcus lines are looking better and the Prime Minister Motley is getting commendations and that's independent commendations for her handling of the crisis. The church remains faithful and committed to one another. It's providing financial assistance to those who need it at this time. Brothers and sisters are in touch with one another and we had two baptisms during the curfew period. We have a sister who had COVID-19 and is now recovered and back at home. We are having weekly services on Sunday and Wednesday on Zoom and that is getting better by the week. We are grateful for God's grace through this pandemic. While the world wrestles with this virus, we the church acknowledge that our God has everything firmly under control. Amen. And again, greetings from the Bridgetown, the church in Barbados. Greetings brothers and sisters in Jamaica and the Caribbean from us here in the Bahamas. You know, God continues to prove himself faithful amidst this pandemic. He has so far protected his church and has kept all the members here safe from the COVID-19. You know, our prayers is that he will continue to do so. You know, so far to date, we have had 80 confirmed cases with 11 deaths from the virus. A lot of these cases are community cases, which would suggest that there might be more. But amidst all that is happening, God continues to work. He can, we continue as a church to have all our Sunday services, all our midweeks, all our family groups, house churches uh, via Zoom, <clears throat> and um, being able to connect via Zoom. And that has been going great. You know, at our leaders meeting on Friday, uh, we had over 20 persons who were either studying the Bible or being worked with online. So God continues to work and utilize the mediums and all that we have to his glory. In our prayers is that all you remain safe and remain faithful and faithful. Only God alone knows when this will end. And I know that at the end of all of this, God will get the glory. So my brothers and sisters, we love you. Stay safe and continue to give God all the glory that he alone deserves. Good day all, and hello from the sweet islands of Trinidad and Tobago. My name is Nanine Yolafleur, and it is special to be sharing with you some good news on behalf of the brothers and sisters here in North, Central, and South Trinidad, along with Tobago. Our theme for this year is All In. Our focus has been to deepen our convictions as it relates to being all in for Jesus in every era of our spiritual lives. Now this theme has kept us focused with our preaching and teaching of God's word over the first three months. But of course, up came COVID-19. This has been and continues to be the most interesting time in our lives with new challenges and circumstances, but also new opportunities. But with the use of technology and the hearts of the disciples, we have not missed a worship service to date. Our technical guys came through big time. Every week we have been stepping up our game with our Zoom services to God be the glory. Now, while we've been busy getting church organized, the country has been busy dealing with the pandemic. We are praying for those on the front line as they continue to battle the coronavirus and take care of those who are sick at this time and are continuously in our prayers as well. And as of April 21st, we've had 115 confirmed cases, 8 deaths, and 28 recoveries. You know, there have been no cases of coronavirus among the members of our church. Praise be to God. And we continue to thank him for that. Um, we have been looking forward to encouraging one another, though. And one such way has been through our month-long quarantine devotionals. Each day, we have had the opportunity to hear from different disciples sharing on various topics 
but with a familiar face and voice, it has been a very effective tool for us at this time. Not only for the Christians, but our friends as well. Since the devotionals are posted on YouTube, and they've been getting some really great reviews. Praise God for that. You know, last Wednesday, Hope Trinidad and Tobago launched, Tobago our, launched our I Can Do initiative, where they are calling all the disciples in our church, with also our friends and families, to not sit down and, and, and think about what's going on, but to get involved. And the question is, what can you do? So we've been asking everyone to do something. Um, with the goal of serving others at this time. So I want to encourage you, feel free to join us and let's make this a Caribbean thing. Details are on our website and uh, the initiative is our I Can Do initiative, Hope Trinidad and Tobago. And we have seen six new souls added to our number thus far this year. Two of them happened to be in the last two weeks, praise God. Even though life has been challenging for many, God has been working on the hearts of our friends and family. You know, we have had many new friends attending our online services and a lot of new Bible studies also, to God be the glory. You know, one of the last two baptisms happens to be uh, the mother of one of our sisters. And uh, it's really awesome when you see families united in Christ. So, so praise be to our Father in heaven. So please pray for us here to continue to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ fearlessly and for us to win as many as possible, even during this time. Much love to you all from the Port of Spain Church of Christ. God bless. Greetings, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Rhett Dopwell, and I co-lead the church in Grenada, along with our brother, Silbert Robinson. The, the situation in Grenada at the moment is looking up. Um, we have a total of 14 COVID-19 confirmed cases. Um, six are showing as recovered. Um, we were close to, I think, being... I would say sort of stable if there's such a term in this in this situation but we recently learned of a, of a potential case that we're waiting on results for I guess depending on those results you know we will know how we fare going forward if that case is positive there's a chance that there was a lot of community spread and that may be cause for concern so that is something you can keep in your prayers we are praying that that if that situation is something entirely different to COVID-19, and that would be would leave us in a in a in a much better situation. Um, we went through phases of of different types of lockdown. At first, we were able to function almost as normal, just with physical distancing, um, and and there was a curfew at night. However, some people could not behave themselves and were getting into trouble having parties and, and large gatherings and um, I guess just treating it like a, like a, like a holiday and, um, and that resulted in the place having to be more severely locked down, especially as more cases emerged. Um, so the, the government has been trying to reduce the spread by, by keeping people away from each other which is quite understandable um, the unfortunate thing is that that meant that basically supermarkets and gas stations and many many things that people are used to having access to became quite difficult and inaccessible um, i think it was unfortunate that there wasn't much notice given so many people perhaps did not have the the, the foresight to prepare so they were caught with, you know, I guess, low on supplies. Um, anyway, they, they allowed some opening days here and there to allow people to get by. And um, that was, you know, we, people had to face some really long lines, you know, just ridiculously long lines, uh, standing up in the hot sun lines, maybe nearly a mile long sometimes, six feet apart. 
And um, those were not too good. And it may have been also some instances where people were, you know, panicking a bit and, and causing people to be too close together. Um, nevertheless, I think we've moved on from that and we're now opening um, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So that, um, that, that presents an easing up. I think, I think people are able to get what they need and, and function a little bit better. Um, I think people are understanding the situation a little bit better as well and more people are being compliant. I mean, the majority have always been compliant. But I think more and more people are being compliant. Um, it's it's now um, a law to wear a mask when going out in public or when around others, while still keeping the same physical distancing. So I'm very, I'm very happy about that. Um, I'm I'm blessed to be married recently to a, a doctor, and I think that both of us were on a similar page when it came to preparing for this. Um, we we have been probably at least a week to two weeks, sometimes more ahead of our government in terms of their instructions. We, we have been obeying their instructions two weeks, one week, a month before they make it into a rule. We have been wearing masks. We have been preparing. We didn't wait for them to lock down before we shopped. Um, so we thankfully are quite relaxed and, and ready. Um, I think we, we tried to do that for the church members, um, but we didn't want to, to panic, you know, make people panic, but we tried to, to hint that that's what we should be doing, and, and we think, we think um, many of them did. Um, and basically, you know, as a, as a church, we're, we're 11 members, and we've been keeping in touch. We've been, you know, making sure um, no one is in need. Um, and basically keeping in touch by Zoom. We've been having some Zoom get-togethers on, on, on Fridays normally, and they have been encouraging, just, just, just chatting really, um, you know, just chatting and, and, and you know, maintaining our, our, our friendship, you know, maintaining our relationships as, as a church. And that, that has been really nice. Um, we've been joining in with Trinidad mainly on, on Sunday and Wednesdays with, with, with their Zoom service. And we've also been been joining into Jamaica um, with with the YouTube service as well, and um, sometimes on the same day, sometimes on other days in the week. But we've been um, keeping up with what's been been put out by the by the you know our nearby churches, and we've been encouraged by the lessons and the, the sharing that that we've been getting. Um, this Friday, we actually plan to add a Bible discussion to our, our get together. So we have a Bible discussion first and then have a, a get together time. So we hope to use that as a, as a form of outreach as we experiment with, with um, you know, using technology, using the, the internet and the, and the technology available to us to, you know, keep working on the, the Great Commission. Um, personally, when I think of, of the, the times that we're in, um, the way that this situation, this global situation has us all communicating like this. Um, it, it reminds me of, of um, the book of Acts um, when, when Stephen was stoned and, and they had that great persecution breakout and the church that was, I would say, somewhat comfortable, somewhat enjoying being a church in Jerusalem, even though they were given a mandate to bring the gospel to, to everyone on, on the planet, um, they were perhaps a little comfortable and it was a few years after Jesus left and it, it took that, that situation, it took, it took something, something you know, severe to, to, to get them going and, and get them out of their comfort zones and, 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 and on the mission field to, to bring the gospel to the world and, um, and the church you know, experienced amazing growth in that time. And I feel like this, this is a similar event in, in, in my mind, that, that, that the church, there's, there's potential for the church to do really well in this time. Um, and they, I mean, while, while it's, it's obvious, it obviously brings about its challenges, um, they, uh, they, there's, there's a lot of potential in this time from, from a church point of view and, and, and in many other ways, you know. 
Um, I personally am enjoying having a little rest. I'm the kind of person that keeps quite busy. And I, I used to joke and say, when I die, I will rest. But it seems like God has other plans for me and I'm getting a bit more rest now. So I'm not complaining about, about that. Um, and, you know, so far, so far we're managing. Um, you know, so we're trying to basically, we're just trying to keep each other encouraged. Um, so I hope that, you know, hearing from, from us would encourage you. Hearing from you does encourage us and seeing the things that you guys are, are putting out, the devotionals and the lessons, the messages, the, the marriage devos. Um, it's, it's all been really encouraging and enlightening. I think, um, you know, now, now is a, a great time to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I think we, you know, the, all, all the things that have been, you know, in, that we've been reading about and, and hearing about in, in the Bible, um, what, what we've been preparing for, I think it's, it's becoming a reality right, right now. It's, it's now we, we, can, we can test our faith. It's now that we can, we can um, you know, we can really dig deeper into our relationship with, with God and, and then share that with, with others because people around us need to, need to know, you know, why, why are we okay? Why are we calm and, 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 um, and at peace in all of, in all of this? You know, it's a, it's a great time to be a Christian. And I, I believe that, um, when God is good and ready, He is going to bring all this to, to an end. And, um, Maybe my only concern is, will we know who to give the credit, who to give the credit to for the end of, of COVID, COVID-19? But I remain optimistic. Um, I, and, you know, we try to, let's try to encourage each other. Let's keep um, each other in prayer. Let's keep those on the front line in prayer. Um, and our, some of our brothers and sisters and relatives and friends are in those, in those situations and and, you know, we just can't go wrong with prayer at this time. There's always room to pray. Amen. So as we say these days, keep safe and keep well. Take care, my brothers and sisters. God bless. Hi, I'm Dean. And this is my beautiful wife, Melissa. And we be the church in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And we just want to tell you that we are grateful to God for how he's protected and watched over us here in the Virgin Islands. Uh, so far we've only had 54 cases of COVID-19 on island. And we've unfortunately had three deaths. But there are only two live active cases at the moment that we are very grateful. One of the things that I was most impressed by was the spiritual response of our governor when he asked for a day of prayer and fasting from the island about three weeks ago right as he started to lock down everything. My wife will share about the church. So in the church, we have not had anyone confirmed with the virus. Um, and we're very grateful for how God has protected the different members of the church. We've been uh, worshiping together via Zoom for several weeks now. And over this time, God has been blessing our fellowship. Uh, just before things started to be locked down, we had been studying the Bible with a lovely young lady who's a master's student at the University of the Virgin Islands. And she got baptized on March 16th and then went home to be with her family soon after that during this crisis up in Maryland. As a result of her being at home, her brother, who plays professional basketball in Europe and has been home because of the crisis, he has been studying the Zoom both with Dean and some guys here from St. Thomas and also with some brothers in there. And we hope that he will be baptized soon. His name is Alex. Please pray for him. Also, we have the joy of restoring a brother who had left the church about four years ago, and it's so great to have him back with us as well. On our Zoom calls, we have had people from both the USVI and the British Virgin Islands. We've had people from around the Caribbean join us, and we've had people from around the United States join us as well. And this has really been a great encouragement to us. Yeah, the governor had a lot of speeches for two weeks to close them, and Thankfully, he opened them up for us on our 29th anniversary, which was yesterday, and uh, we were able to go down to the beach and walk along and see people, but also to be able to see dolphins. So we'll leave you with this video of yesterday. Take care and God bless. Greetings. 
and a big hug and a lot of love from your brothers and sisters in the Dominican Republic. Uh, like many of you, we are here uh, persevering in this, uh, while this pandemic is, is going on and uh, we are on our fifth week of uh, basically a shutdown. There's a curfew going on from five o'clock in the afternoon to six o'clock in the morning. Uh, there is no school. Uh, most businesses are closed, uh, except for pharmacies, supermarkets, and a couple of other uh, businesses that are of a major need during this time. The church in general, thank God, is uh, very encouraged during this time. We've had to, like many of you, transition into virtual services, transition into uh, you know, worshiping online and uh, preparing all this and recording at home and uh, uh, all these different things. It's been definitely a steep learning curve, but I'm very proud of the church here and how well it has done uh, during this transition. Uh, incredible. Something that's been really encouraging is to hear about so many Bible studies that have been going on. Uh, people who, because they have the time and they are at home, they're just sending uh messages out to their friends on WhatsApp saying, if you're interested in studying the Bible, I've got the time, uh, let's get together. Uh, I've heard of one sister who literally has uh, 10 or 12 Bible studies of her own going on that she's pulled other sisters into. Uh, that's been really encouraging. And that not only that, but we've been studying even the Bible with people who are in provinces here in DR that don't even have a church. Uh, but we're, we're, we're spreading the word and we're going to see what the Lord does and how his spirit moves during this time. Because I believe God does want to move in this time. And I don't think he just wants us to stay at home or, you know, be bored. But I think really take advantage of how can we uh, allow the gospel to spread during this time. So I really think like the scripture says in Ephesians that we do need to make the most of every opportunity. Be praying for us. Uh, as far as the islands in the Caribbean, we have been at this moment the hardest hit uh, with this uh, pandemic at this moment we are um, there are 5044 5044 cases confirmed unfortunately there have been 245 deaths and right now there's 463 people who have recovered uh, from the coronavirus so please be praying for us uh, they say that we have yet not reached the uh, peak uh, the the curve has not been flattened and so please be praying for us because we know that um, they're talking about this could extend all the way into June. And and uh, and we just really want to give glory to God during this time, but also pray that God can uh, detain this and that locally uh, our, our, the, uh, the, so the, the, the people in our country will, will wind up obeying the laws, even though it's tough because many have to go out and work every day. So please be praying for us. We'll be praying for you. Much love. And uh, a big hug again for the Dominican Republic. Bye-bye. Uh, greetings, everyone. My name is Yves Thoreau, leading the church here in St. Kitts. I'm here to give you an update about what's happened here in St. Kitts. We had 15 cases and now two have recovered so far. So now we have in 13 cases. We had over 200 in quarantine, whether at home or by the government, and 200 tested negative. Uh, we have 15 in spending. Uh, so far, uh, we're doing great as a country, and the government, you know, taking uh, the necessary precaution and to all the citizens, I mean, the supermarkets are open, there are some business places able to open, but of course, with a lot of uh, precaution. And so far, we, we're doing great as a country. And as a church, uh, for the past few weeks, uh, we have been serving services via Zoom. And he's doing, we're doing great so far. I mean, we have friends and family um, here in St. Kitts and abroad able to participate in, in the services and we are grateful for that and all the disciples are okay and I mean the good news is we have food and so everybody able to get stuff they need and we are grateful for that um, so as a church now what we do we just try to focus on building up ourselves you know with uh, lots of uh, teaching 
and you know so that will really help us to grow and mature spiritually so we're grateful for what god has been doing here in st kids and i pray that god will do the same in your country and i ask you for your prayers and we will do the same for you and thank you so much and god bless you Thank you so much to all our Caribbean reps for sharing the news that is going on in the Caribbean. Yes, it was great to be able to have all of you online. I hope you utilize the chat over to the side to be able to communicate with each other. And uh, we need to be able to make sure that we are remaining connected. Thanks so much for your love, your perseverance, your hard work. Continue to hold out the gospel in your part of the world. And let us continue to uphold Jesus and bring many more people into his kingdom. God bless. Bye.